Hi everyone and welcome to the third and final part in our buff system. We've made the buff system, we've made the UI, we're now going to make the UI add to the screen our buffs and debuffs and show you the setup of a debuff as well. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to go back into our UI for our buff tray. And in here we want to add a couple of events in here. We're going to do first event is a custom event for add buff okay. and that's going to take the buff tray and we want to also know what buff we want to add here so go to inputs and this will be buff effect buff effect and that'd be an object reference and I'll add buff here, we're going to do spawn, uh, not spawn, sorry, create widget. There we are. And choose our buff icon. Now we need it to show an option for buff effect in our icon. So let's go over to our icon here and make sure our buff effect here is set to editable and exposed on spawn. Now when I go back to here and refresh this node, you'll see buff effect. We'll plug that into there. And then we want to add it to our buff tray. This is for add buff, so this is for buffs. We do add child to hazard the box and plug that in. Now we're going to do exactly the same but for debuffs. We're going to do custom event add debuff. And we're going to take this, copy, paste that in, that in there. And we'll just name this one a bit different so it stands out. Debuff effect. And rather than the buff tray, we'll put it in the debuff tray instead. Okay. So that's all we need for this bit. Um, we now need to be able to call these things. So what we do is on my player, controller, and HUD classes. Uh, let's go in here. I don't think I have one, so we'll make a controller. For the template here. Go into a class, player controller. Third person controller. And open this up. And on the event graph here, we're going to go begin play, create widget, and choose the buff tray. Adding it to our viewport. But before we do that, I'm writing it to a variable. Make it HUD. Now, if we add it to a viewport, we should be, able to be, should be able to now see it. But we want to keep that reference there because we need to be able to access it to access the buff tray and those functions we made. So with that there, we're going to tell our game mode here to use this new controller. So player controller class and choose my third person control. Save. Okay, so now we've got that there. Uh, we want to go to my buff debuff effect here. And on the buff debuff effect on begin play, we are going to tell it to add the icon to the screen. So we need to get player controller cast to our third person controller. And from there, get the HUD. Okay. And we're going to promote that to a variable. Okay. File and save. Now, if I go to the effects folder again. Effects. Okay. Um, we want to add it to, we want to know if it's a buff or debuff first and foremost. So at the moment we've only got them bundled in together. So let's add a variable on here to indicate whether or not it is a buff or debuff. So we say is buff. In fact, in fact we'll say is debuff. And that'd be a boolean. And then we're going to take that out and put that into a branch. But then if it's true, we're going to take out the HUD and do add debuff. And the debuff effect would be itself. And then on the HUD again for false, we'll do add buff. 
to force there with self going to butt effect again. Oh, save. Now, because this is on begin play, you want to make sure that begin plays on other on on the children are set to add a call to parent function as well before anything else. So make sure you plug that in. So that way, it won't override it and just extend it instead. So let's take a look at that in action. Right, and we'll go to the thing. Okay, and we can see our bar is now appearing in the corner there. However, it's not showing the image. Now that is because the image here has not been set up for our buff effect. So buff debuff effect, the buff icon. I'm going to go to my buff speed, go to class defaults, and I'll see buff icon here set to none. I'm going to drag in my boots, pop that on, file and save. Let's see how that looks inside here now. Okay, looking not bad. It's a bit stretched, uh, thanks to the size of the, the thing. There we go, it's working as intended. So let's go and fix that sizing a little bit. Now, to make this a bit easier for myself, I go to the buff tray and designer and add a buff icon manually to, let's say, the buff tray. I can see what it's going to look like because we've already got this buff tray set to a certain size. Um, if I were to, to go to my vertical box here and just scale this up, so, and tell this thing, rather than stretching, to just be aligned in the center. Vertical there. So now I know what kind of size it is. Okay. I'll save that. Oh, sorry, not delete this one first. I'll save that now. And if I go ahead now and push, we should be not as stretched. Okay, and there it is. And as I run out, it will stop and return me back to normal. Okay. So that is the buff debuff system in working as intended. So before we sum up, I'm going to go through and add a debuff to our game so you can see what it's like. So let's go ahead for the process of adding another buff effect to our game. So in our buffs and debuffs and effects, we're going to go to our debuffs, right click on this, create child class, and we're going to do uh, immolate debuff. And open this up. And we're going to give this a Niagara system here. Uh, what can we do? Uh, nothing useful. Um, we'll just use this one for now. Okay. Compile there. And if I go to my class defaults, I need a buff effect to be added to this. So I'm going to go to my content drawer, go to my effects folder, create a new child my buff debuff effect, create child blueprint class. And we'll go debuff emulate. And we can now choose that from our debuff emulate. All right, and we're done with that. Next, we're going to go to our debuff emulate uh, effect. And in here, we're going to add a Niagara system. Or actually, uh, a particle system. Because we're going to use the default fire one that comes with the starter content. Uh, fire. Remember, this will be attached to the player, so the player will look like they're on fire whilst they're running around. Um, and on the event graph here, we want to deal damage to the player. Keep in mind, keep in mind, sorry, you want to keep that parent begin play in there. So on begin play, we'll do set timer by event. And we'll do a time of no point. Uh no, we'll do a uh, time of one looping. We'll do the event down here. Custom on deal dot damage. Um that wrong there we go on deal dot damage here uh we want to take the attach parent get attach parent actor apply damage and put that on here that's 10 for example now here you'll see some options for event instigator and damage causer damage causer would be this buff here so damage causer we'll just do self 
But the event instigator may be something that who cast this buff debuff. So if that is the case, you want to make sure you're passing through the event instigator when you create these as well. So when I go through my buff debuff base and I create this, make sure you plug in the instigator who is spawning this in. Now, because of mine in the world, I don't have to put this in at all because there is no instigator for it. But by debuff emulate, we can just put in self as damage cause. Okay, and that will do that on a loop until it disappears. I'll save. Then to test that out, if I go to my third person character and create a damage event from event any damage. And in here, I'm going to do a print string printing out the damage that has been dealt to my character. Change that to red as well, make it easier for you to see. Okay, um, so let's put that into my world now. And buff system, debuffs, emulate debuff. So there's our icon there appearing. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is put in the icon for the debuff effect. So let's go to the effects, buff emulate, class defaults, and we're going to choose our bio attack. And tick is debuff. Okay. So if I walk through this one, I'm now on fire and I've caught uh, that texture, that icon there. And you can see there on the top left, I was getting damaged on my character too. Do that again. Okay. Remember, it's tied to lifespan. So if I want my debuff here to last longer, all I have to do is go to a debuff emulate, go to its class defaults and search for life and just override this number with what I want. Let's say 15 instead. And it will update all our HUD stuff for that. Okay, so you can see the bar is going a lot, lot slower. Especially when compared to the boot. Yeah. Okay, there we go. And there you go, we've now got a complete buff system and debuff system for our games. Now, as I mentioned during the video, you can also use this system to allow for casted buffs and debuffs by other players or yourself or other enemies. It's exactly the same process, except that the items are not going to be spawned in the world and uh, collided with. Instead, they're just going to be spawned in and attached straight away. So give it a shot if you want to try and put it into your own characters. If you like this series and want to see more of my content before everyone else, Consider supporting me and the channel over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where all my videos are available early before anyone else can see them on YouTube from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in me and the channel. If you're watching this and you're not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.